As part of disaster recovery testing, we restore our virtual machines every quarter and make sure that we can log into them, that everything looks okay. And last week, one of the VMs blue screened and just went into a, a blue screen boot loop. So I thought that was a bit odd. I've never seen that before. The production VM that the backup was taken from was totally fine. But I wanted to solve the issue of why the restored backup into a new VM, why the machine was blue screening. So what we did was we took a snapshot of the production VM, the OS disk, and created a managed disk of that and then restored that. So let's just show you on the whiteboard quickly what I did. And then I'll show you some code that will recreate recovery services fault and the VM and a backup job and how you can, using PowerShell or the Azure portal, um, swap out the OS disk, if you have a blue screening VM, from a backup of an OS disk, and then hopefully the machine will boot up again. So if you've got an array of data disks on your virtual machine, for, for example, for a SQL Server, um, hopefully this will get you back up and running. So if we just quickly um, sketch it out, so we've got our, um, so we've got our virtual machine and that has an OS disk attached to it. Apologies for my writing. And we have a recovery services vault over here, for example. Let's just call that RSV, recovery services vault. And we are basically backing up to that every day. And when we try to restore to a new VM, so call this one VM2 down here, that restore resulted in, let's get a green color, that restore caused this VM2 to blue screen. So basically the, the solution to this issue is to, let's get pink, uh, create a snapshot of the OS disk So we just take our snapshot and then from that OS disk what we can do is create a managed disk from the snapshot and then we can then attach that. So imagine that in the VM2 that is not working we can attach this managed disk to uh, VM2 and then this machine should boot up. If you just imagine that um, in this demo I'm not going to show you the data disk but imagine that there are lots of data disks also attached where you want to preserve the data because what you might be tempted to do is just do a full restore from a backup in the past that worked but that would um, take you bring your data disks in as well so we just want the OS disk, so restore the VM, take a snapshot of the OS disk, and then attach that to the machine. So I've got some code in GitHub. So here's the code in GitHub. So what we're gonna do is deploy the infrastructure with deploy.ps1, which will deploy the recovery services vault and the VM and a backup job to back up the VM to the vault. And then I'll show you with this PowerShell script here, demo.ps1, how to swap out the OS disk. And at the end of the demo, we can clean up with the PS1 script. So feel free to download that. The link is in the description. So let's bring up PowerShell. So if you clone the project from GitHub, you should see something like this in Visual Studio Code. This is the scripts repo. And there's a folder called Azure VM Restore Failure, which we're gonna use for this demo. And to deploy the infrastructure, we're gonna run this deploy script here and it's got default of UK South and an environment called test. So you can deploy to your own region if you want, just change that value there to your region. Uh, what it does is it gets the um, IP or your public IP so that you can actually um, RDP into the VM. And this password here, obviously you'd use key vault for that normally. And then this part here de deploys the, the recovery services vault and the VM from a bicep template called main and the main bicep template is split up into modules. So I'm not gonna go through all that stuff. You can have a look through that if you like. Um, 
There is an issue with Recovery Services Vault, and basically, if you try and configure the backup job at the same time of the de deployment of the Vault and the VM, then it fails, so we need to put a sleep in there and then deploy the backup job separately, which is a bit of a pain, but that's just the way it is. So if we go to deploy, and <clears throat> I usually run all my scripts in debug mode when I'm developing, so I know this works now because I've tested it. So let's deploy our infrastructure to Azure, and it will create a resource group with all the resources. I'll pause now and come back when that's done. So that has now deployed. And if we go to Azure and go to this tab, so we'll create this resource group here called Azure VM Demo Test RG. And we have our recovery services vault and the virtual machine. Notice the virtual machine's just got a random string so that we can connect to it using the DNS name so we don't get any conflicts basically. If we go back to VS Code, and we'll close the deploy script. We'll finish with that because we've now deployed our infrastructure. And let's open demo.ps1. And let's just run this line by line. By line. So this first line just defines the environment we're going to run in. So if we press F8, we can run that line of code in VS Code. I've got a parameters file here with all of the parameters in it. So let's uh, feel free to change that if you want to. So we're going to load that into a variable and convert from the JSON. We press F8. And we're going to get the resource group from that value there, from the parameters file. So the resource group name is Azure VM Demo Test RG. We're going to get the VM that we've just deployed, which is this VM here. There's the name that I just showed you. And <clears throat> what we're going to do is create a snapshot now, as I showed you in the whiteboard. The snapshot name is going to be the virtual machine name with a hyphen followed by the current time and date and dash snapshot. So let's create that name and then we're going to apply that name to the configuration for the snapshot and then we're going to create the snapshot using this configuration here that we just created and we're going to put it in, our, in the same resource group so you can put it wherever you like so that is now snapshotting the virtual machine OS disk because we've got OS disk selected here. Once the snapshot has been taken, we're going to create a managed disk. So if you go back to the, the whiteboard, so we've got our VM, we've taken our snapshot, this pink area here, and now we're going to take the, we're going to create the managed disk. So let's go back to um, VS Code <clears throat> and so what we're going to do now is we're going to get the snapshot we just created from the Azure and we're going to use premium LRS because that makes things a bit faster this is not going to last hang around for long create a disk configuration so what this will do is it creates a new disk config and the storage type of premium and we're going to put it in UK South because that's what my environment's set to. And we're going to copy it from the snapshot. And the resource ID is this snapshot ID. So we're going to copy the snapshot into a new disk configuration. And then we're going to create a new disk. So let's create that and put the results into a variable called disk in our resource group. And we're going to call this new disk replaced OS disk. So for this to work, we need to shut down the VM, and then we, uh, once the VM has been deallocated and shut down, we can then swap the disks over. Let's stop the VM now. So this will take a few seconds to stop. Let's go back to Azure and see what has happened. So if we click the refresh button, so we can see that we've got our snapshot here that we just created. And we've got our replaced OS disk, which was created from the snapshot. And we are now deallocating the VM from Azure. And once that has stopped, what we're going to do is unattach this disk and then attach the replaced OS disk, the one that we think will be working, 
into the VM and then hopefully it should boot up without blue screening. Okay, so it took a minute to shut down, so now let's swap the disks. So this um, line of code here in line 24, we're going to set the AZ VM OS disk for this VM, the VM we created earlier on line 6, to the manage the disk ID of the new AZ disk we created. And we're going to give it a name of this disk name here. So let's run that line. And that succeeded. And then we're going to update the VM to apply that configuration. And then once that has run, we will start the VM. So that's now updated. And now let's start the VM on line 26. This will take a minute to start, so I'll pause and come back in a minute. And it looks like the VM has now started. So let's go back to the Azure portal and just have a look. I generally don't make changes in the Azure portal. I just use it to look at things. I prefer to use code uh, using the principle of infrastructure as code. Anyway, that's a story for another video. We should see that the agent status is ready. If we copy the DNS name, and just to make sure we can connect to it, if we go back to VS Code, if we type in test net connection, that's the alias for that command, and then let's try the RDP port of 3389. And because I've set the script to whitelist my home public IP address, it should now connect to the RDP port, and we can see that it's successful. So we now fixed our VM, there's no longer blue screening, we've tested a connection to the RDP port without actually RDPing in, and all is good. So to clean up the resources, all you do is type in cleanup, and that will run the cleanup script. Let's give it a verbose. So do you want to delete this resource group? Yes, we do. And that will clean up that that will drop the resource group. Now, if you just try and delete the resource group by itself without running this script, it will fail because the recovery services vault, let's have a look at the script, this cleanup script here. Um, in recovery services vault, what you need to do is remove soft delete. So if you don't do that first, then the, the deletion of that resource group will fail because it has, recovery services vault has all kinds of protections. So hope that helped. Let me know if it did in the comments below. So all of the code is in the link in the description to the GitHub repo. Just clone that down and you can follow along in this video.